Justin, is there any selection news for us at this stage? Can you tell us? No, nah, not, not at this stage. Uh, we've got to sit down as coaches after I finish here and, yeah, nut it out. So still a few things up in the air. Could we say that someone like Jai Amos or Johnson, or you're looking at those guys? Uh, oh, we're looking at a number of guys that have had good pre-seasons and are unlucky to miss out uh, round one. But, yeah, you won't see wholesale changes. And we're not going to panic, and um, we're going to stay the course. Michael Walters? Uh, he's a chance. He's a chance. Yeah. Um, we've just got to weigh up what's best for him. And I know I've been saying that the last couple of weeks, but he's an important player to us, um, and we need to... Um, yeah, set him up for the season. So we'll keep talking through what the, what that best looks like. Can you say that your forward line will change, though, like the structure? Uh, oh, I can guarantee our forward line will have a better output. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get some stuff right down there. Um, and, you know, we'll make sure uh, we give him a better chance to succeed as well. Um, and it's not on the forward line. It's not on the midfield. It's not on the backs. It's on us as a collective to get it. Um, to get it right, so yeah, it's not all doom and gloom either. Like uh, we're going to make sure, and we, we've we've done it this week. We've um, taken out uh, the main points out of the St Kilda game. And we've gone away, worked on them, um, and you'll see a better performance. Can the three talls and Nat there as well? Can they all <coughs> coexist? Can they all work in that one forward fifty? Uh, I think they can. I think they can, and I think they should have worked better on the weekend. Um, and a little bits on them, a little bits on. Uh, yeah, how we delivered the ball and the care we took kicking the ball inside 50. So, um, yeah, clearly I stand here and everyone would have watched the game, 65 inside 50, you should be kicking more goals. So um, that's on us as a team and coaches to organise. So in terms of that ball use, I know you wanted to try and go a little bit quicker. Was it, you try to train that over pre-season, but then going into a game and knowing that St Kilda is sitting back a little bit, how hard is it to try and get that balance between the players actually showing it and actually implementing it and also adjusting to what the opposition are throwing at you? Uh, yeah, as I've always said it's about getting a balance with our ball movement. And to be honest, reviewing the game, uh, I, I saw enough fast play ball movement. I saw a lack of composure to finish that and tie that ball movement off inside 50. So, you know, whether that's St Kilda forcing us wide or once we got... Um, you know, centre forward and in fast play, we, we lacked a little bit of dare to just roll and play what's in front of us. There's a number of different things that, um, yeah, cause us to not execute. So, um, yeah, I didn't see I didn't see a lot of that over the pre-season. So, um, yeah, we just need to get back to trusting ourselves and, and tying our work off. So you're saying you won't be changing your style of play. You think it still holds up, that in the new up-tempo style of, say, Collingwood or whatever, you don't need to tweak it. 40 inside 50s for two goals in the second half. That, that yeah, but like um, I, like I said, Barra, I saw, I saw enough fast play. I saw enough fast play. And you don't get the ball inside 50 um, from your back half the way we did um, without moving the ball quick. We had 22 inside 50s from our back half. We didn't do that once last year. So, um, yeah, it was there. We just didn't maximise it. And, um, you know, there's opportunities where we could have gone more direct there's opportunities once we got it four to centre, we could have rolled a bit quicker and, and gone before the numbers got back. Um, and a lot of it's just, yeah, poor execution. So um, we need to show a bit more composure with ball in hand. Just on the execution and composure, obviously you can train it, but under match conditions it's obviously different and that's where the pressure's applied. Is it a quick fix then? Can you do that? Because it's pretty obviously hard to emulate. Them. Well, around round one, everyone's, everyone's um, up and about. Um, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to the pressures of the game uh, again. Um, it's a different intensity to the, the practice rounds and, and match sim at training. So um, yeah, I'll back our boys to get it right pretty quick. Now, fights come under a fair bit of criticism, especially from the East Coast. Is it, is it unfair to, to sort of whack him and rule him out straight away after one game in a forward line and a new role? Uh, it's incredibly unfair. Uh, he comes under the spotlight the way he does, and I know he's set a high standard over the years. Um, and, and with that becomes, comes a bit more pressure and expectation. Um, you know, I heard a lot of talk after the pre-season games, he's going to kick 50-plus goals and win the Coleman. And then after one game, he, he gets criticised as the worst experiment of all time. So um, we understand internally that with more expectations on us as individuals and as a team, that the outside, um, the outside noise is going to, going to become greater. And we just need to make sure that um, internally, we're really clear on what we're trying to work on and 
and um, yeah, what roles individuals are going to play. But yeah, we won't be shifting him anytime soon. We saw he did the other day training by himself for a good hour before <coughs> anyone else was even out on the track. Is that has he taken this criticism personally? Oh, I think it's hard not to at times. Um, yeah, but he's just got to understand where he's getting um, his feedback from and the feedback he's listening to from. Um, and understand, and, and well, which he does understand that it's a work in progress, his work is a forward. And it, it doesn't change, you don't, can't click your fingers and become a, the forward he wants to become. So he's got to keep working at it um, and just keep trusting his pre season form. I know it didn't work for him last week, uh, but it didn't work for us, and we didn't help our deep forwards um, as well as we could have. But um, yeah, I've got full faith that he can turn it around. But you didn't throw him into the midfield, did you? So is that is that over? <coughs> that, and, and, well, I wouldn't say over. We we'll, uh, well, probably not, because um, he wants to. He, he's really committed to being a forward and really committed to uh, making sure he, he works on his forward craft. And by changing his roles around, um, yeah, it's probably not the best thing for him in terms of trying to embed, a, embed his forward footy. So. Um, you know, there's, there's opportunities within the forward line for him to be able to um, change his roles up and, and go a little bit higher. We've given him that licence, so we'd like to see a few of those things from him a little bit more so he can manipulate his opponents and take them to uncomfortable positions. So we'll we, we keep you know, upskilling him on how he can best do that. So do you, you don't feel that we see some, some um, forwards go into the midfield for a centre bounce and then drift forward to try to lose an opponent in, in that way. Is that not an option well, for the way you, could, want, you it, want him to play? It could, be, an, it could be an option. Well, we did that with Jacko in the last quarter. He won the last centre bounce. So we'll keep doing it. Um, Swit has done it. Switkowski's done it over the pre-season. So we'll keep looking at those options. Um, but, yeah, we, we didn't go to it on the weekend. I'm not saying we don't go to it this weekend, but we feel like <clears throat> we've got a pretty good centre bounce crew as well when they're up and going. And um, they didn't have their best days on the weekend. Um, they need to get going a little bit through through stoppage as well. So um, yeah, it's easy just to be reactive and, and try and change everything, but we're not going to do that. You, you <coughs> in the goal square for a lot, for most of the, the ball up um, centre bounces, I think, on, on the weekend. He played a little bit higher at times in the, in the practice matches. Where yeah. do you think he's best <coughs> suited as the deepest or pushing up? Oh, there's going to be times when he's better suited deep. There's going to be times when he should take his, his man up. Um, you know, it's interesting that they probably put their best defender on him, so that shows uh, how opposition rate him um, and have rated him over the pre-season. And that should help others around him as well. It didn't on the weekend um, because we didn't take our opportunities, but um, you know, he's, he's going to be valuable for us. Um, but he needs to be able to mix up his positions so he can um, take, it, take his defenders to vulnerable positions. So we'll keep working on him with that. And Jacko, no marks. <coughs> did, that, did that surprise you? I mean, that, that well, yeah, yeah. He, I think he created enough opportunities. He just didn't take them, and that was a bit of the story of our day. So, um, you know, there's a couple where, you know, he's, yeah, fraction off. He's probably a fraction off taking four or five marks inside 450, and that seemed to be our lot for the day. So, um, yeah, it's his first game for the club. Uh, he'll improve on that. In terms of this weekend's matchup against North, uh, did you get to see much of them last Saturday? Any changes that you've picked up on <coughs> under Alistair Clarkson? Oh, I thought their pressure and their dare to take the game on was, was pretty good. Um, clearly their contest work, um, especially between the arcs, was really strong. So, yeah, we're going to have a game on our hands. And uh, in terms of Nick Larkey, he really dominated up forward, booting six goals. Do you have a plan in place for him? Anyone in particular that you're oh, sent with? Yeah, oh, Piercy or Coxie. It's usually our go. So, um, yeah, he had, a, he, had a, he had a good day. He got some good, really good supply and made the most of it. So, yeah, he's, he's one on our watch list for sure. How is Michael taken? <clears throat> Freddie's fine, yeah. That ankle's pulled up really well. So he actually got through more training yesterday than we expected. So good to go. In terms of the, the turf at Optus, you, you, any chance of getting a, a captain's run there tomorrow? Yeah, we're, we're training there tomorrow. And, um, yeah, I've got high hopes that it'll be, it'll be fine. Uh, they replaced a lot of turf there last year and it came up really well, actually improved the surface. So, um, yeah, I expect they would have done a great job. So they, they, I think up the stadium and the company say it's ready to play as soon as it's laid. I imagine that's probably, you guys are firmly of that belief as well? Yep. Yep. There's not much time, so it better be. <laughs> it looked good last year after they made um, mm. change like that, but the, it didn't play as well. You, know, you guys weren't out there for that game. It was West Coast St Kilda. Yeah, okay. And there were some concerns from the players and slipping over and stuff like that between the... 
the new and the old grass? Is that the, the biggest issue that you'll need to get through tomorrow working out? Well, you know, this like, is like, totally like different, but it's just totally different surface. Like last year, it was waterlogged and slippery. I, I don't think it'll be waterlogged and slippery. So um, it's, it's a total different surface this year. <clears throat> Um, yeah. Will Brody uh, re-signing with the club earlier in the week yep. for another three seasons. How important is he going to be moving forward, particularly with Sarong, Brayshaw, uh, Erasmus, Johnson, all these young blokes? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's important. Like he, he's, um, he's been around for a while, but he's still only you know, 23, 24 years of old, age. Um, he's finding his feet in the AFL, and yeah, his best footy is ahead of him, so excited to lock him away. How do you coach the bump? How do you coach bumping? Yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah. <clears throat> probably don't talk to our players too much about it um, apart from if you, you choose to bump you get to go low real low <laughs> and um, we probably choose we probably teach our players to tackle rather than bump so that takes a little bit out of it but yeah um, yeah like the way the AFL have gone about protecting the head it's it's um, yeah it's necessary in this environment and we've got to look after the player with the ball so you coach this week because of what's happened <laughs> or have they seen enough on TV not a, hopefully they've seen enough thing. on TV it hasn't been top of my priorities list this week <laughs> got a bit of other stuff we need to work on so yeah. you put much work into thinking about how was the Clarkson and what he might do or do you just work uh, on your own team now uh, his focus has been pretty much on us well and, and North Melbourne's footy not so much on Clarko he's clearly had a big impact um, at the club and they're playing differently so we're probably a bit more about the mechanics of how they play rather than how he goes about it. I think uh, first time you've been back at Optus since that uh, elimination <coughs> final as well and twilight, you must be pretty excited to get in front of, what, 50 plus? Yeah, we're pumped. We're pumped to get back in front of our home crowd um, and feed off the passion. So, um, yeah, get along and, and cheer as, as uh, hard and as loud as you did that night. It will help us um, get our season rolling. You put out there a bit of a sort of a you know cry to the fans, and is is that you know passionate? Is that sort of getting to Griffin Logue as well, a former Docker who's now? <coughs> no, I'm not going to tell our players how to react to a former player who goes to another club. So, um, sure they'll handle it the way they want to handle it. Um, but yeah, we feed off the Purple Army, and yeah, hope plenty get there Saturday night. Fans can go their hardest though. Fans can do whatever they want. They pay their money. <laughs>